it's a different song that I have picked and um, you needed to get the one I sent. But I'm glad that we chose this one because this song, I don't know if you felt it, but as you heard the words, did you feel the drop, you know, from your head to your heart? And that's really what prayer is about. It's about going deeper into your heart. Prayer is really about feeling. The words are just the words, right? But the prayer is a feeling, and that's kind of what I'm going to talk about today. It doesn't have to be certain words that we pray. It's about connection. I've always um, learned that prayer was a conscious contact with God. So any time that you were connected inside with something bigger than you, that's what prayer is. So, so I want to start off because prayer can be humor, right? Because you're laughing and you're connecting and it's, you know, with each other. So I'm going to start off with a joke, all right? So here we go. Okay, so there's a man walking along a California beach and he's in deep prayer. And all of a sudden he says out loud, please, Lord, grant me one wish. Suddenly the sky clouded above his head and in a booming voice, the Lord said, because you have tried to be so faithful to me in all ways, I will grant you one wish. The man said, please, Lord, build a bridge to Hawaii so I can drive over at any time. <laughs> I want to see the beautiful sights and alleviate all this stress in my life. And the Lord said, your request is very materialistic. Think of the logistics of that kind of undertaking. The supports required to reach the bottom of the Pacific, the concrete, and the steel that it would take. I can do that, but it's pretty hard for me to justify such an intervention just to satisfy your need for worldly things. Will you take a little time and think of another wish? A wish that you would truly like me to invoke that I could show you my power of blessing. So the man thought about it for a long time, and finally he said, Lord, I wish I could understand women. I want to know how they feel, what they're thinking, why they give me the silent treatment, why they cry, what do they mean when they say, oh, it's nothing. And most important, how can I make a woman truly happy? So after a few moments, God says, you want two lanes or four lanes on that bridge? <laughs> about prayer today, and, you know, it's, there's all kinds of prayer, and, and that's kind of where I want to go with this talk today, is that 55% of the people pray, 55% of the people pray, I did some kind of statistics, Jewish people pray three times a day, they're supposed to, um, Islamic faith, they pray five times a day, the Buddhists use meditation to connect, the Hindu faith uses a lot of chanting, common ground people do whatever they want to do. <laughs> But since the beginning of time, since the beginning of time, we've had this desire to connect with something bigger. You know, to, to know that there's something bigger in our lives than just our human self. You know, and the truth is there's not a wrong way to pray. So I want to say that before I start talking about what prayer is. So whatever way you pray is good. Just pray. And pray with meaning. Pray like you mean it. And I think that's important. You know, ever since the church came into being, People have prayed and way before that. Remember, people have prayed since the very beginning of time. So I started working with this book, and I want to talk about it a little bit, because it's The Secrets of the Lost Mode of Prayer, and it's by Greg Brady. And he's an astrophysicist, and he's a scientist, and he studies lost religions. And he brings it all together, and I love his work. He blends all of it. And what he said was that, that in his travels and in all of his research, he found that there were many of these old traditions that talked about God not as somebody up here, right? Somebody separate from you, but that God was a mysterious presence, you know? It was something that we didn't fully understand, but that there was an energy that existed. And it was sometimes called the spirit of God, the web of creation. They called it the near presence or the, the energy of life. And not only did they talk about what this field of God was, they talked about how they, they left detailed instructions on how to work with this field. Detailed instructions on how to work with this field of God. And they left future drawings and ancient scrolls describing the way that
that they prayed and how they entered this field of God. They said that the field of God had no words, no words at all, but they used human emotion. It was about human emotion. They were to feel the prayer as if it was already accomplished and then feel love and gratitude for it. And it was this feeling that gave them direct access to God and to the power of creation. And so these prayers are used today in many cultures, and he kind of goes through all of the different cultures. He goes to Tibet, and he finds out, he finds the monks that are, are praying, and he has the gongs and all of this incense and the different things that prepare them for that. And when he talked to them, he found that they were preparing for the feeling that would be happening when they prayed. So I, I thought it was interesting, this one, he goes to the, um, the southwest borders of the United States, and um, he goes to watches a Native American. He goes up with him. And the Native American um, stands, goes up into the, um, the hills, and he has a circle, a sacred circle that he stands in. And he says, what are you, are you going to pray for rain? And he said, we don't pray for anything. We pray rain. We pray rain. He goes, what's that mean? And he said, let me do it. And he gets into the circle, and he just stands quietly and closes his eyes. He gets out of the circle, comes back, and Greg Brady and says, well, that's it? That's all you did? Close your eyes? And he said, that's all I did. That, that's, that's the prayer. He said, it has no words, but I felt the rain. I felt it. He imagined it. What it would feel like. He smelled it. He stood, his feet were bare on the ground, and he felt the ground, and he felt the cornfields as they were wet with the, the, the rain coming down on it. He described this intelligence and this alive feel, and then he gave gratitude of humility, he gave appreciation, and he stepped out. And he said, that's what it's about. Prayer is always about the feeling. No matter how you do it, it's about how you pray, how you connect, however that is for each and every one of us. So, I got to thinking. You fast forward to the 20th century, right, to now, now, Modern science rediscovers something that may be called, what they call it, the field of God, the spirit of God, the web of creation, the matrix. There's a field of energy. And now it appears to, the scientists are saying, it appears to be everywhere, already here, existed from the beginning of time. This is so interesting to me. Max Planck who is the father of quantum physics, states that the existence of this field suggests there's a great intelligence that is responsible for this world. It's a matrix. And he said, we have to assume that beyond this force, this existence is conscious and it's intelligence. And here's the kicker, I think. The field of intelligence responds to human emotion. That's what they've discovered. This is big stuff, you guys. They have discovered that you know, how you, you can break into that field of God with your prayers, with your emotions, with how you feel inside. So he said that um, to pray, when you pray kindness, you pray love. When you put anything out there, it comes back to you, and that's what prayer is. It's a mirror. He said, I, I can't remember, I think it was um, Deepak Chopra that says something like, something out there is doing something we know not what. Something we do not know is doing something we know not what. Right? What is it? There's something out there that we don't know. None of us know what it is, but it's a field of love. I know what it is. It's the field of love we talk about. It's this presence that is the field and is in each and every one of us, and we can access it with our emotions. And science today proves what the mystics have always known since the beginning of time. You know? And it holds the key to our survival. It holds the key to peace within you. It holds the key to relationships, to how we do our life. It means that the language that connects us with God is feeling and emotion. You know how many times have you just said these little breath pairs? I remember growing up, I used to say, you know, dear God, bless mom and dad you. I would say, mom and dad you. Just bless them. That was my prayer. It wasn't until I felt it, until I felt it in every bone in my body, that I, I, I get it now, what that means, you know? So what I'm saying is, is that however you pray, pray like you mean it. Pray like you mean it. Because what it does is it focuses our attention on this quality of heart that we have. You know, that's the lost mode of prayer that he's talking about.
And he says the, the, the bells and the gongs and the prayer, everything that led up, and as Judy's speaking your meditation, that all led up to the feeling, you guys. See, it's not the words at all, but it's the feeling that you feel, you know? And, and, I, and I got to thinking about this and, and how we don't need words, right? We can live our life as a prayer by focusing on the beauty of life, right? Because it gives you this feeling. And I, I went to the park yesterday, that's my place of prayer. And I usually go with my daughter, and we're kind of gabbing away as we're walking and stuff. And I was alone this time, and so I kind of took my time, and I walked. And I happened to sit on this bench, and the water was like, it was so beautiful. It was like five feet away from me. And the ducks were there, and it was really quiet and beautiful. And I saw hawks above, and I started to get this deep, deep feeling. And I remember Pearl sent me a she sent Judy and I this beautiful video of the good things that are happening in the world. And I started to think about that, and I said, this is a good world. It's kind. It's beautiful. And I want to see it that way. And so I kind of went into this prayer. And, you know, I, I can't say there was words, but it was this beauty, this feeling of beauty. So I came out of it, and I just felt like, wow, you know, one lived it. I felt so good, you know. And I come out, and I see when I get up from the bench and I'm walking through the park, I see these little kids walking through the park with trash bags and they're picking up all the trash. Then I go a little bit further and I see this man feeding the squirrels and I see this Muslim family walking. She had the, um, what's it called? Uh, yeah, or not the whole full thing, but a cross. Um, anyway, on, and so they had three little kids, and they were just staring at this guy that was feeding the squirrels, and the squirrel was up the tree and stuff, and he turned around, and he saw him, and he gave his bag to the little kids, and he goes, you know what, I think I'm done with this bag. Here, would you like to feed them? And the little kids took the bag, and then they took over feeding the little squirrels, and he walked off and smiled, and I go, wow, you know, this is such a kind world, it really is, you know, we, we always hear the bad things. But it's such a beautiful world. Everywhere I went, I started to see kindness. And I swear, I really believe this, that I don't know how it works, but because I was focused on how beautiful and how kind that this world is, I started to see it everywhere, right in that park. But I've been there before, and I might not have noticed it, but I saw it because I was in this deep place of prayer. And I, I'm saying to you is that if we can live our lives that way, can you imagine? focus on the good part of life, right, and be there and live our life as though it's a prayer, we have the possibility of changing things. You know, and each one of us is responsible for unleashing that incredible splendor in us. St. Francis, Francis says, there are beautiful and wild forces within us. So think about that for a minute. Just breathe that in. There are beautiful and wild forces within each and every one of you that you can unleash the power of your being. There's an energy that appears to be the living canvas of which our lives are inscribed. I love that. And, and I'm, what I'm wondering is, is that heaven? Is that heaven? You know, because I think we both live in heaven and hell, right? Depending on where we are in our head. And the moment that we drop from this incredible mind of ours about thinking all of these, you know, thoughts and Seeing all the news and you know, getting engaging in gossip and all the stuff that we do, when we step back, empty our mind and take a breath and feel the presence of God in here, it changes what happens to us. Not just changes us, but it changes what's out there. That's the kind of power that can be unleashed in each and every one of us. <coughs> Someone said it's like a blanket. It's through this blanket of God. We're blanketed in God. We live in God, not just God lives in us. We live in God. And when we live, when we really believe that, we realize that we're connected to each other. You know, we're really connected. It's like, you know, there's so many synchronicities. I see it so much in my life. And I want you to think of the times in your life when things started to happen, when you thought about it, right? When you thought about it. I was doing a talk uh, last week, if you were here, it was on, I don't know, it was about the lady that had the stone, and then the guy wants a stone anyway. Remember the, the talk I did? 
Okay, so I looked all over for that. I'm always looking for a story that I kind of remember. I got into the car, Jenny's car, my daughter's car, and she has on a book, an audio book. And the book, when I got into the car, was telling that story. That's what I'm telling you. I don't know why. I, I don't get it. I just know there's something intelligent out there doing something we don't know what. And what that says to me is that there's a power, there's an intelligence in us that brings that out. What does that say? What does that say to you? To me, it says that we live in this incredible, intelligent universe. And that we, whatever we project seems to come back to us, that life is a mirror. John Wheeler, who is a contemporary of Einstein, dedicated his life to the study of consciousness. And he says that we live in a participatory universe where what we put out there creates it and we get it back again. He says our feelings create, not so much our words. Sometimes we think our, we say something, you know, and it creates it. I think it's our feelings that create our life. And so it's up to us to check where we are. You know, to take a breath, drop into compassion, you know, and view ourselves, ourselves from this compassion and this love that we are. When we see ourselves in compassion, when we see ourselves in love as these incredible light beings, wow, what that draws back to us is the same thing. So we get to choose what we create in our hearts, right? If we want peace in the world, then we've got to feel it. We've got to create it. We've got to create it and give thanks for it and appreciation. Prayer doesn't change God at all, but guess what? It changes us. It changes us. Now, so you ask, you know, what about hurt? What do I do when I'm feeling hurt? He's got a whole section on hurt and wisdom. And, he's, and I'm not going to get into it because it's pretty long. But we all feel hurt. And we got to feel it. we got to feel it. we got to get through the hurt, right? We can't just jump over to feeling good and feeling gratitude and all this stuff to be able to bring that forth. And I'm remembering one of the lost gospels of Thomas. And I always love this um, one quote, and it says, it's from Jesus, and it says, um, if you bring forward what you have within you, it will save you. If you do not, it will destroy you. It will destroy you. What that means is that if you're going through some stuff, you can't bury it. I love that you Every so often, you, you, you're honest, you're authentic, and you cry, and it's okay, because you're going through something, and you need to do that. You can't keep it buried. If you want to get to the other side where you are, you know, feeling this incredible gratitude and prayer, you know, and, and here's the cool thing, is that you do that too, you know? And even if you're going through grief, if you're going through whatever in your life, there is this, this piece of you that can find the wisdom in it, that can find the gratitude, that can find the appreciation somewhere in your life. And that's what we're talking about here, you guys. It's not burying it, pretending to be happy, being authentic and honest, feeling what you feel, talk it out, whatever, play it out, until you can come to the field of God. Not until, that doesn't sound right, not until. It's, it, you're always in the field of God. You're always in the field of God. But when you can get your mind clear and drop to your heart, what you are creating is at the level of spirit, at the level of spirit. Bottom line, deep emotions and feelings reach the mirror of God. You know, gratitude, love, appreciation reach that mirror of God and it's mirrored back to you. However you connect, however it is, however you commune with God, whether it's gardening, whether it's, you know, posing outside, whatever it is that makes you feel that deep sense of love is prayer. That's what prayer is about. My prayer for all of us is that, you know, that we unleash this power, this presence of love and peace in our lives. So I'll close with, dear God, I feel peace in my heart. Please repeat after me. I feel peace in my heart. Let me just say it like you mean it. I feel peace in my heart. I feel peace in my family. I feel peace in my family. I feel peace in my community. I feel peace in my community. And I feel peace in the world. And I feel peace in the world. Thank you.